We weren't really designed for this world. As I said, we were created in grace. And Jesus says, you will never be, be able to adapt or adjust to this world. You will never be able to adapt and adjust to time and space. Why? God didn't create it. Why? You're a perfect, holy, innocent child of God, and you're only happy in your natural environment, and that is spirit. That is eternity. You want to find eternal happiness. You really want to find ha happiness that lasts. You have to go to the environment where the happiness is. The kingdom of heaven is within. The Christ is our identity in the kingdom of heaven. Christ has not left the kingdom of heaven. A Course in Miracles is a pathway of bringing illusions to the truth. It doesn't want you to, there's nothing in the Course that says manifest. There's nothing in the Course that, that says that you should try to find the truth in the illusion. There's nothing in the Course that says bring God into this world and go around preaching God and talking about God and bringing God into your daily life. No, Jesus is saying what you perceive as your daily life is an illusion that is made up of beliefs and thoughts in your mind and you need to bring those beliefs and thoughts to the light within and they will disappear. But don't try to bring the light into the projection. This is a world of projection and the attempt, Jesus tells us that the projection is the attempt to get rid of something that you do not want. Well, the only way that you can actually get rid of something that you do not want, if you finally get to the point where you say, I do not want the ego, don't project the ego, because <laughs> that's not how you're going to let it go. You have to forgive it. You have to, you have to reel in the projections. Yes, of course you'll be tempted to get upset with people. You'll be tempted to get upset with, with temperatures, with noises, with sounds, with, with animals, with pets. You'll, you'll be tempted many, many times to get upset with something on the screen of the world. Tempted to be upset with the images. Something's not right with this picture. As the ego is always saying, something's not right with the picture but it's always pointing to the picture. And Jesus is saying, no, I'm giving you a workbook that if you practice my workbook, it will train your mind to withdraw the projection. And when you start to realize, I'm never upset for the reason I think, and then when you start to realize, I can be hurt by nothing but my thoughts, you will start to bring your attention back to your mind and that's exactly where the attention needs to be. Not on the people, not on the situations, not on the things, not on the, the political dramas, Brexit and all these, and the, saving the environment and, and going green and doing all these things that are very either popular or unpopular depending on, on your beliefs. But Jesus is saying, no, you need to withdraw the projections and bring it back. Why do I have to do that? Because he's saying, to forgive, you first have to realize that these are all thoughts and beliefs in your mind. You're not going to be able to let it go as long as you're seeing it as outside of you. As long as you're seeing yourself as a person and all these things going wrong in this body and outside of this body, you're at the mercy of the ego. You've, you have bought the ego's belief system hook, line, and sinker. And you're sinking. Uh, you're a captive to the ego if you believe in the projection. But to the extent that you can withdraw the projection and just pay attention to your thoughts, and just pay attention to your feelings, and just pay attention to your beliefs, you are withdrawing the projection and you're bringing it back to your mind. Why is it so helpful? Why is that so absolutely helpful? Well, the ego made up this time-space cosmos to keep you mindless. It doesn't want to know that you even have a mind. You know, even in many scientists, they won't talk about the mind, they talk about the brain. But the brain's part of the body. 
The brain is a projection. You know those little neurotransmitters? The, that's not thinking. That's the projection of thought, those little neurotransmitters. That gray matter in there, that doesn't do any thinking. That gray matter is just gray matter. It's a projection. It's a projection of the mind. So remember when you look at this world that this world was made by the ego to keep you mindless. To keep you mindless. As any of you, when you were growing up, you know, you, you go to these classes, and you go to science classes, you go to biology class, you learn all these things. A bunch of hogwash, I'll tell you. I can tell you after 10 years of university, I, I now see that it was brainwashing, it was mind washing. I was, I was off on ego pursuits trying to learn the much ado about nothing until I finally saw it was much ado about nothing. But people will say, well, a, a mother's instincts or a, an animal's instincts the body doesn't have instincts. The body's a projection. Everything. Instincts are ego concepts projected onto the body. The reflex instinct. No. Your, your body doesn't even have a reflex instinct. That's just another concept. The whole ego belief system is concepts projected onto a screen for one reason. To make you mindless. To forget about your mind. Why is it so important that the ego is telling you to forget about your mind? Because it wants you to forget about your thoughts. And why would you want to forget about your thoughts except that somewhere deep down inside you believe that you've separated from God and you've tried to rip your thoughts apart away from the Creator and that you've had the power to miscreate and you've had the power to make a whole new kingdom other, like, other than the real kingdom. You see, the ego's got a big story going on in there, like you need to make sure you stand clear of God because it's saying God will, will kill you, will strike you blind. God will destroy you if you ever come back. That's the whole ego teaching. He's, the ego's saying, don't think you can just go back and get off scot-free. And the Holy Spirit is teaching you never did what you thought you did. You could believe it, but you couldn't make it so. God isn't angry. God loves you. Jesus told the parable of the prodigal son over and over when, when he was on earth that the, even the son that seemed to squander his inheritance and was out feeding the pigs was welcomed back, back home. Come home. I love you so. That's the truth of it. We're being called home and welcomed home and the ego's got this big fearful puff of nothingness that's trying to convince us that we're guilty, that we've sinned, that, that God will, will kill us if we return. So these are the two thought systems that you're dealing with. One that's, that is all pure love and the other one, which is fear, guilt, sin, pain, suffering, and, and basically telling you, don't ever go clear, close to God again, because you're going to suffer. So, why is all the attention on the world and outcomes of the world? Because if you keep focusing on outcomes of the world, even basic things like, I got the job, or I got the partner, I got the child, I got the family, I got the house that I always wanted. I got a big screen TV in the house that I always wanted. You know, these are just outcomes. And the reason that the ego focuses, focuses on the outcomes because it doesn't want you to come in and discover that it's all happening in the mind. There, in Lesson 132, Jesus says, there is no world apart from what you think. Ideas leave not their source, and everything that you're experiencing is an experience of, in mind, without exception. The quantum physicists who have been studying for decades, seven, going on eight decades of quantum physics, have been saying the same thing. There is no external world. There is no world apart from consciousness. 
Now Jesus, of course, says consciousness is the domain of the ego, which is different than a lot of spiritualities, but still he's focusing on the correction. He's still focusing on the forgiveness, on the unified field, on the unified awareness. Jesus even says you're not responsible for the error. You are responsible for accepting the correction of the error. How loving can you be? How loving can you be? Even when you get it back to your mind, he's going to keep saying you're not responsible for the error. You're not responsible for the error at all. Here's the atonement. Our purpose is to accept the atonement. Your purpose is to do exactly what Jesus did and accept the atonement. Accept the correction. And it's in your thoughts.